Presbyterian Church in Beaverton, Oregon, and we are glad that you are here to celebrate with us on this particular Sunday. Do, if you can, stay afterwards. We have our annual congregational meeting that'll just follow worship. It'll be about a half an hour or so, and we'll have a chance to hear from our foundation and the great work they're doing and elect um, nominees for the board uh, for the next year. We will also hear uh, from our nominated committee and our trustees that talk about the budget and any questions that you might have. So please join us afterwards if in fact you are able. Also, I want to make special mention to an event that's going to be happening this coming Tuesday, so two days from now, the Adult Education is sponsoring Don and Maxi on Zoom is going to be here to provide questions and answers and a presentation. Her title is Living Our Church Mission Through Race, Dialogues, and Action. We will send a, another email out on Tuesday with the Zoom link. The Zoom link is also on our website or it's been in past emails. We would love it if you could join us for that continued focus on race. Um, it certainly will be an excellent presentation, Tuesday night, 7 to 8.30. And then also a uh, mention about the women's retreat that is scheduled for February 13th from 10 to 12 p.m. And if you'd like to get more information or sign up for that, Audrey Scheidler is the person for that. So we hope that you will um, um, learn more and get involved with that. So. All right, we begin worship today, and our lay reader is um, Craig Butler. So I'm going to give you a moment to light the candles that are in our midst as we begin to center ourselves, knowing that we enter a holy space because all of us together have come together to worship, but also to celebrate community. O oh God of empty tombs and resurrection living, make us mindful of the pervasiveness of hope, the determination of faith, and the persistence of love. In a world where suffering is ever near and where terrorism provides fear, instill in us a resolve to live peacefully, justly, and compassionately. May we be the agents of healing and reconciliation when opposed by the forces of destruction and alienation. May we be the beacons of beneficence when others are harbingers of hatred. May we be the vessels of grace to a world in disarray. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Our first team is Come Live in the Light. In our minute for mission this morning, I simply want to make mention of um, something that we're, that we're going to be doing next week. We're not going to have a sermon per se, but we are going to have an opportunity for all of us to share stories of reconciliation in our own lives or experiences or things that we have seen happening around us. We will have Kelvin Taylor and one of our youth, Afwa Bonfol, who is a black American and in the youth group. And they are gonna start us off by sharing some of their experiences and making connections toward reconciliation and I hope that we can respond to their voices and also a reading we're going to hear from Amanda Gorman um, and listen to her five minute um, speech and poem about climbing the mountain. 
So please do join us and perhaps think about ways that you might be able to share as we celebrate and perhaps learn from each other. So there are so many exciting ways that God is working in our community as we consider our receiving and our giving and the works of ministry in this place and in the world. May we remember a child such as this one that we celebrate throughout the year. We belong to God. Through all our living, we are fruits must give. Good works of service are for offering. When we are giving or when receiving, we belong to God. We belong to God. We belong to God. We belong to God. We'll continue with the Hebrew reading, which is out of the book of Genesis, chapter 33. Jacob looked up, and there was Esau coming with his 400 men. So he divided the children among Leah, Rachel, and the two female servants. He put the female servants and their children in front, Leah and her children next, and Rachel and Joseph in the rear. He himself went on ahead and bowed down to the ground seven times as he approached his brother. But Esau ran to meet Jacob and embraced him. He threw his arms around his neck and kissed him, and they wept. Then Esau looked up and saw the women and children. Who are these with you? He asked. Jacob answered, they are the children God has graciously given your servant. Then the female servants and their children approached and bowed down. Next, Leah and her children came and bowed down. Last of all came Joseph and Rachel, and they too bowed down. Esau asked, what's the meaning of all these flocks and herds I meet, I met? to find favor in your eyes, my Lord, he said. But Esau said, I already have plenty, my brother. Keep what you have for yourself. No, please, said Jacob. If I have found favor in your eyes, accept this gift from me. For to see your face is like seeing the face of God, now that you have received me favorably. The theme reason Theme reading is by Nelson Mandela from The Long Walk to Freedom. I cannot pinpoint a moment when I became politicized, when I knew that I would spend my life in the liberation struggle. To be an African in South Africa means that one is politicized from the moments of one's birth, whether one acknowledges it or not. His life is circumscribed by racist laws and regulations that cripple his growth dim his potential and stunt his life. I had no epiphany, no singular revelation, no moment of truth, but a steady accumulation of a thousand slights, a thousand indignities, a thousand unremembered moments produced in me an anger, a rebelliousness, a desire to fight the system that imprisoned my people. There was no particular day on which I said, from my henceforth, I will devote myself to the liberation of my people. Instead, I simply find myself doing so and could not do otherwise. Thank you, Craig. And now a short two minute video celebrating Nelson Mandela. Ernest Hemingway discovered some of the difficulty of characterizing relationships between fathers and sons in his short story, The Capital of the World. The story revolves around a father and his teenage son Paco in Spain. Paco was an extremely common name in that time in Spain with desire to become a matador and to escape his father's control, Paco runs to the capital of Spain, Madrid. His father desperately wants to reconcile with his son, so he follows him to Madrid and puts an ad in the local newspaper with the following. Dear Paco, 
meet me in front of the Madrid newspaper office tomorrow at noon. All is forgiven. I love you. Hemingway then writes, the next day at noon in front of the newspaper office, there were 800 Pacos, all seeking forgiveness. The world is full of people in need of forgiveness and reconciliation. Perhaps more, now more than ever before, people of faith need to lead the way forward. This is our domain. This is what has been done for us and what we are called to do for others. The Christian faith in a nutshell, be reconcilers, build bridges. So what does true forgiveness and reconciliation look like? Well, we've been talking about different people and different images of that over the course of this month. Today, I want to include another image, the image of Nelson Mandela, who was sworn in as the president of South Africa. What was so significant was not just that a person of color was becoming the head of state after years of segregation and mistreatment of black citizens, but it was also Mandela's gracious inclusion of his former adversaries that was so inspiring. When Mandela arrived, he was accompanied by his oldest daughter, as well as the South African security forces. But that was not all. Those had, who had been watching him for 27 years in prison, those people walked alongside the car, saluted him, and escorted him to his inauguration. It was a powerful moment for many reasons, but most of all, it provided an example, a reminder of what change can look like in just a matter of three years. Mandela had been considered formally by the South African state as a public enemy just years earlier. He was a terrorist to be arrested and exiled to an, a foreign remote prison. So let me tell you another story, an image that is helpful for us to be reminded of how we can build bridges and be reconcilers. This one in the Old Testament. This one took a lot longer to make reconciliation happen, but Esau looks back on 20 years. He looks back at his brother Jacob, who had left home, cheating him out of his father's blessing, a blessing that Esau felt was rightfully his. You can imagine his thoughts of terrible revenge over those 20 years. But with the passing of time, Esau's anger and his burning resentment had subsided. Those feelings had been replaced with the deep awareness that God had not forgotten him and that he, in turn, could not forget the love that he had for his brother. So Jacob returns to Canaan, and Esau sends out, sets out to find him. And upon seeing Jacob, Esau runs to meet him and embraces him and falls on his neck and kisses him. And together, they wept. And then we have this powerful response from Jacob. 
he tells Esau that to see his face and to be accepted by him was as though he had seen the face of God. I just love that line in the story. We see the face of God when we forgive. When we reconcile to others, we see the face of God. I know that there are many people in our lives that reconciliation seems unlikely, if not impossible. I also know that for many, the political line between Republican and Democrat these days seems unmovable. In any polarized situation, the overriding human tendency is to draw a line with oneself and one's allies, the good side, and to place others over there on the bad side with very little attempt by either side to understand the other. As these positions harden, it becomes almost impossible to achieve a breakthrough. That is what happened, in fact, between me and my father. In his book, Power of the Powerless, Vaclav Havel describes the powerful practice of remembering. And he had the practice of always drawing the line that runs through. Vaclav Havel, Havel was, was the president of the Czech Republic back in the 80s. You remember, may remember that Havel was one of those who resisted communism and the communists and was put into prison for his activities. When he came into power after the Velvet Revolution, Havel was conspicuously forgiving toward his former enemies and other collaborators. Some blamed him for this but he maintained his position. In the Central European regimes of the 70s and 80s, Havel famously said, the line between good and evil does not run clearly between them and us, but rather through each person. Yes, the lines we draw are not between us and them, but within each of us. In other words, we are the ones that draw the lines. And that means we are the ones that can undraw the lines. You can, I can. It's in our power to do so. So what are the lines that you have drawn between yourself and others? Who are the people or groups or persons that are on the other side of the line from you? Images like Esau and Mandela and Havel and countless others have given us examples of curse of how we can make reconciliation a reality, not just a pipe dream. But the real question for us this morning is what do we want our lasting image to be? One of courage and doing what is right or one of stubbornness because we think we are right. If you choose the former, here are a few lessons that I've learned about building bridges. 
First, the language we use matters. When I hear people say that how can 74 million Americans have voted for Trump, I cringe because a statement like that only feeds into the divisiveness. It assumes that Republicans are a monolithic group, but people have different reasons for voting. We would not tolerate being categorized as all white people are self-serving and don't care about others. We need to listen more. We need to stop making all-encompassing statements that only serve to divide even more. Language matters. Second, we need more humility. I really think that the divisions in our world today are largely because of ethnocentrism and trying to find, build ourselves up regardless of what it does to others. People so desperately want to be recognized. And so they write one line tweets in order to be recognized or want to search for how many hits I can get on YouTube to make me feel better about myself, regardless of what it does to other people. Friends, as people of faith, we need to communicate a deeper love by taking time to build authentic relationships. We need to model humility in our culture. Third, we need to become more vulnerable to embrace somebody like Jacob and Esau did after 20 years of estrangement exposes your heart. We need to expose our hearts to others, not to manipulate them, but to invite them to share their hearts with us. The most powerful lesson my father-in-law ever taught me, a Presbyterian missionary in Islamic Pakistan for 35 years, is that in order to build bridges with Muslims, we must become vulnerable enough to convert to their faith as much as we expect them to convert to our own. In the political arena, it may mean that we are open to becoming more conservative if we consider ourselves liberal or more liberal if we consider ourselves conservative. Fourth, we must be intentional. Reconciliation will not happen by itself. Esau had courage and took the step to make things right with his brothers. Leaders like Mandela and Havel have demonstrated how to value and cooperate even with their former enemies. It's not easy. But it takes us moving forward. It takes grace. It takes stepping out of our comfort zone. It takes commitment. And then finally, we must remember that reconciliation is a long healing event, not a momentary one. It takes time and energy to restore a relationship. It's not a one and done thing. And so we must be committed to the long haul, to the person 
not the ideal. For indeed, I have seen your face, and it is like seeing the face of God. Jacob cries out. Friends, there are Pacos everywhere. People who need to see God's face of reconciliation and forgiveness. People in our families, in our communities, across the racial divide, across the political divide, across the religious divide. Who is the Paco in your life? What lines have you drawn? And what are you going to do to undraw them? I am convinced that this is our moment, people of faith. This is our moment to course, to correct the course of divisions in our lives and in our world. This is our moment to see and to be the face of God. That Clive Havel once wrote, the salvation of the human world lies nowhere else than in the human heart, in the human power to reflect, in human meekness, and in human responsibility. Hope is not the feeling of certainty that everything will end well. Hope is just a feeling that life and work have a meaning. Thanks be to God and amen. So we're going to take about 10, maybe a little more minutes, in our small groups, in our breakout rooms, and encourage you to connect with each other. I do have three questions simply that I asked in the sermon. And if you can think about what are ways that you can, in fact, undraw the lines that maybe you have wrote for yourselves, or what are lines that we can we as a community undraw and be a model of humility to the world around us. So go into your small groups, and we'll see you afterwards. So welcome back, everyone. And I'd like for us to take this opportunity to share our joys and concerns. And the one that I just heard from an email that Karen Wittenberg's mother just passed away and I don't know more details than that. Maybe somebody here in the room does. Are there any other concerns or joys that you want to add? You can press your space bar and talk um, briefly one at a time or write them in the chat box and we'll have Amanda read them. So any joys or concerns? I have a question. How uh, how did Garrett do with his surgery? Does anybody know? Debbie Wilkins' son? I I have not heard. I, I talked to Debbie the day of, and um, it went well, and he wasn't experiencing any pain yet, but they were, you know, they were giving him medication to stay ahead of it. I haven't talked to her since that day. Um, but apparently it went well. Oh, good. Thank you, Marilyn. Any other concerns? Also, uh, Bert Schmidt, he was supposed to have his procedure on Thursday. Has anybody heard about that? Well, I think I see Bert Schmidt. Uh, Bert? Well, it may be too small. Maybe that's not Bert. Is Bert in the room? Well, maybe not. I have not heard, but uh, my plans are to check in with him um, tomorrow. So, anything written in the chat room, Amanda? 
Yeah, Carol, Carol Ho uh, would appreciate prayers as she ha is having her knee replaced tomorrow morning. Okay. All right, let's take a moment and Amanda. And then Ross and Nancy Miller, um, their sister-in-law has tested positive for COVID-19. She is a primary caretaker for her brother who has Alzheimer's. So we are concerned and they appreciate any prayers. Most certainly, Ross and Nancy, we're, we'll be praying for you, of course. Well, my mother-in-law, who's 91 and in a, uh, a uh, assisted living, her sister had an outbreak of COVID. Um, she tested positive about a week ago, but has been asymptomatic. So I hope that continues. Uh, yeah. Of COVID, how did uh, Dick and Robin? How's your testing going? What's what's up with that? Uh, everybody's negative, so it, which is really great. So we're still quarantined for a few more days, but uh, everybody's negative. Oh, good. Yeah, I had some uh, great news. Uh, my dad, who's ninety four and is in a rehab facility, had tested positive for COVID and. Uh, must have recently tested negative again because they gave him the vaccine. Oh, good. Um, but he still needs prayers because of his broken back and the rehab. These certainly are scary times. Um, let's take a moment to quiet ourselves, our minds, and uh, tune our hearts to the spirit that is among us. Spirit of life and of love, God of many names and no name at all, hear our prayers. Be with us in these times, in these uncertain times, these frightening times, these times when so many Pacos fill our world. Call us to say no to hatred, to racism in all of its forms, and help us to redraw the lines that divide us. With the community of Southminster, we lift up all the people that we've mentioned this morning, the people that are on our hearts, those that are struggling with health issues, those that are struggling with fear about COVID and family members, those who have experienced the loss of a loved one. We ask that you might give a sense of hope and healing and even blessing during this time. Spirit of life, may we see in our coming together a path forward and may we see ourselves on this journey together. It's all of us. Most importantly, may we see the face of God in each other as we build the beloved community and as we hope and long for your spirit of love and hope and grace toward all. Amen. I invite you to pray with Craig Butler in the corporate prayer. Join me in the affirmation of faith written by Reverend Brett S. Myers. O oh God of empty tombs and resurrection living, may we trust in kindness more than might, in forgiveness more than revenge, in gentleness more than harshness, and in virtue more than prudence. May beauty flow forth from our spirits, truth from our lips, and mercy from our hands. 
Help us to live the life that is light, that we may, like Jesus, rise above the shadows of death and despair and shine forth the blessings of love on all of creation. In the spirit of the risen and still rising Christ, may it be so. In our responsive hymn, In the Midst of New Dimensions. So a little high church, but I just love that hymn and the words um, for all of us. I do want to remind you that next week um, we're going to create a, a little bit of a different worship experience, more of a conversation. Um, certainly Kelvin and Alpha will be here that will get us started with some of their thoughts. And I invite everybody to enter the conversation about whatever is on our hearts in terms of reconciliation, what we have learned, how we might be of support to each other as we continue this journey of building bridges to the people around us. And so today I close with the words of Nelson Mandela in this book, Long Walk to Freedom. We understand it still that there is no easy road to freedom. We know it well that none of us acting alone can achieve success. We must therefore act together as a united people for national reconciliation, for nation building, for the birth of a new world, let there be justice for all. Let there be peace for all. And so may the God who is above you hold you. May the God below you ground you. May the God beside you walk with you each and every day and become bridge builders in all that you do. Amen. <laughs>